Hello, everybody, and welcome back to our next panel. Thank you very much. It's, it's a great honor and pleasure, of course, for me to participate in today's event. And I would like to also share the great congratulations to my colleagues and friends uh, with regards to this really special day, because um, I know that you have put a lot of efforts. So I would really like to highlight efforts of the team members of National Science Foundation of Georgia, of course, the European Commission and uh, relevant EURACSIS unit, but of also uh, the Ministry of Education and Science of Georgia. So I'd like to extend great congratulations and thank you to all the stakeholders who have put lots of efforts in making this uh, virtual day with all of these virtual coffee breaks and stuff happen. So um, uh, the name, the title of uh, our today's um, third panel is about, I think it's about talent partnerships. And we all know how important it is. And I think it's been highlighted several times today in today's uh, discussions that uh, in this knowledge era and network era, it is of utmost importance to have strong talent partnerships, to have strong collaboration across sector, across countries, across portals, uh, universities. So um, yeah, uh, your access is going to be one of the, and is actually today as well, one of those spots, virtual places that will definitely contribute to strengthening all these talent partnerships and opportunities for Georgia's and uh, international researchers. And uh, without further ado to, um, not to take the time of our brilliant speakers, we have exactly uh, six speakers in our uh, today in, in uh, panel number three, power of node circulation. Let's hear from Mr. Tornik Echostaria from your access monitoring program uh, and, and um, later on continue with the other speakers. So uh, Mr. Tornik, if the floor is yours, please present yourself and your- uh, Hello, good afternoon. <clears throat> uh, for some of you, good morning. Uh, uh, I think Svetlana should be here, so because we uh, we splitted our uh, presentation, uh, she wanted to present uh, some of the statistics, and uh, my speech uh, was meant to be as sort of backing up uh, of of her words and testimonial sort of thing. If she's here and willing to share some presentation, uh, I'm ready to wait for her. If not, I'm gonna. Uh, say about my feelings and experience of this program. Hi, uh, oh, I'm yeah. very happy to <laughs> yeah. see you all here, all our friends from Georgia. And uh, I'm very glad that we had this opportunity to cooperate in many, many fields. One of these was um, the mentoring program that Tornike just mentioned. And uh, just in a few slides, I will show you some facts and figures from the first six months of operation. It was a very successful program. And uh, actually, for the first six months of uh, operation, we gathered more than 540 researchers from all over the world. And uh, 110 of them uh, or a bit more are mentors. For this same period, we did have 88 couples matched. This means more than uh, eight, uh, more than 10 couples a month, which is really a success. Uh, from all of these, uh, 67 couples started already their mentorship, and 32 of them successfully finished. 21 of the mentees are still looking for uh, joining another mentor. And uh, this just a map that shows our uh, spreading around the world. We already joined 39 countries in our uh, mentoring program and we still continue enlarging. So in the, these uh, 67 couples that started their work already, uh, please switch off your mics. And um, we do have uh, uh, 98 participants that uh, participate in these couples. I'm very glad to say that most of them are female researchers. That means that female researchers are very active recently. 
So uh, 43 young researchers are uh, joining as uh, mentees and um, it uh, um, are two level, 32 uh, researchers joined, 13 of them are young researchers and 19 mentors. From uh, research level three, we have 17 researchers in the couples only. Uh, three of them are young researchers and men as mentees and 14 are mentors. And research level four, we are very happy with these uh, uh, mentors that uh, joined this, uh, our, our program because all of them are very experienced and they share their uh, knowledge with uh, their mentees. All fields of science are represented in, in uh, the mentoring program. Uh, this is just an illustration and uh, this is another type of illustration of the fields of science. As you can see, they are really very, very many. Most of them are um, uh, spread around um, entrepreneurship and innovation and business management, ecology, environmental science, bioinformatics, medical probes and inhibitors, um, uh, biotechnology, plant pathology, bioinformatics, marketing, foreign uh, direct investment, business management, etc. And I re uh, uh, remind you again, these are only the couples um, fields of science, not all fields of science that joined the program. And something that is re relative to Georgia, we do have a very active participation from Georgia, uh, I can say. Uh, six mentors in total joined the mentoring program and three of them already have mentees. Uh, these are Irma Kachidze, Nina Bicikashvili and Maka Manskava. 14 mentees joined from Georgia. Two of them have already a mentor and these are Tornike and Maya Meladze. Tornike, um, fortunately, is uh, together with us today and will share his, uh, his experience uh, in the program. And uh, some general numbers that shows our significant outcome from the program. Two of the young researchers that joined couples already found a job due to their participation in the program. Many scientific articles, projects, and more were started and involved researchers during their participation in the program. That was all from me. And now happy to hear what uh, Tornike can say for us. Oh yeah, <clears throat> thanks very much again. Uh, it's, it's pouring outside, so <laughs> hopefully no, uh, that night doesn't disturb us. So, uh, Master, thank you. So I have to say thank you to you, Svetlana, to Salam, for introducing me and having me here. Uh, I'm very grateful to you. Thanks very much. Uh, so, uh, as, as I mentioned, I'm invited to this panel to share my experience and feeling about this program. And I can assure you it's very positive. Here we go. H how uh, did I get to this program? Uh, I mean, involved to this program. Uh, so. One morning I opened my email, so I just received a random email saying, can you hear my voice? Yeah. Somebody is using the microphone, I guess, as well. So yeah, uh, I opened my email. Uh, I've seen um, uh, a letter from one of the you know, organizations uh, asking me to join the program, either as a mentor or mentee. So, I thought that's opportunity. I, I, I took that opportunity and uh, uh, involved myself uh, to this program as a as a mentee, not a mentor. So, and I wasn't wrong. I'm, I'm a bit cautious person. So, uh, what to say about this program? So, just fine words, uh, but no parsnips. And uh, let me down, break it down in pros and cons of this program. So, basically, talking about the opportunities, uh, <clears throat> I've separated five areas. So basically, uh, it's, it's a huge opportunity uh, and benefit to find 
a highly qualified academic supervisor. And I have to praise my academic supervisor because she's, she's brilliant in any direction, like theory, practice, analytical skills, and so on and so forth. So uh, once again, it proves this program is a huge benefit in terms of finding a highly qualified academic supervisor. Another one is, uh, as being a researcher, and I'm pretty sure some other researchers as well, they are quite busy because they are doing their own daily jobs, like in daily chores, like uh, researching or uh, performing administrative or academic duties. So the flexibility uh, of planning and um, uh, online meetings is quite crucial. So this once again gives the opportunity, this online format gave, gave me opportunity to have that uh, online meeting uh, planned uh, upon the requirements of my academic supervisor and my uh, own requirements as well. And one of the most important things, um, and the reason I involved myself to this program was expanding the network. Uh, and I guess uh, that this is the another brilliant opportunity for that. Uh, this one and another one is collaborative researches. Uh, so what the end result of my uh, um, involvement of this uh, project was that me and my supervisor with some of other academics, so we are uh, trying to conduct um, uh, and derive uh, collaborative research, uh, which will be published later in one of the high, high quality journals. So, uh, and another one is future possibilities between the collaboration of collaboration between the universities. Uh, I'm working for the university. They also work for the university research centers. So there, there have been some offers uh, to have uh, connections between those universities. Um, so these are the five areas I wanted to mention and highlight as a benefit, as a, as a uh, uh, pros of this product, uh, or sorry, of this program. Uh, to my surprise, I didn't find any cons, uh, I mean the disadvantages, because all the process went smoothly, which uh, leaves me with the impression uh, for the next year, or for the next uh, cohort, I'm gonna involve myself uh, in this program uh, again. So uh, very, very well done. Thank you very much uh, to those uh, who gave the uh, breath to this, uh, to this project. And I wish you all the success uh, 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 in the future uh, uh, to the project. Thanks very much. Thank you both of you. And it's really nice to have um, participants from Georgia in this really impressive number of our uh, mentors and, and also participants, mentors and participating people. And also Svetlana has shared with us a link here of the mentorship program as part of the EURACCESS. You uh, can feel free to click and, and she has also shared her uh, contact information. Um, so yeah, that looks really impressive. I also have taken a brief glance at it and um, yeah, feel free to check the uh, mentorship your access program and now let's give the word to our next speaker uh, Mr. David Mjadlishvili one of, who is uh, who has been engaged in one of the greatest achievements I would say smart EDM lab at Belize State University and as far as I know and as, as as far as we some some of us remember it has been achieved through a great support of uh, uh, Georgian National Science Foundation and the Belize State University and Georgia's um, uh, Ministry of Education and Science uh, of Georgia. So that's one of the results of a great collaborative efforts, right? So, um, Mr. David, gently, surely, the, the floor is yours now. Uh, thank you, Mariam, for introducing me. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, <clears throat> so, first of all, I would like to congratulate uh, for the uh, launching of the Euroaxis portal and uh, i think uh, it will be very useful uh, and it will be it will prove to be very useful in nearest future uh, so uh, as i understand the uh, organizers of this uh, uh, event uh, wanted me to share my experience uh, with the main topic and uh, uh, my thoughts about around this uh, so here is my short story briefly. Uh, I uh, I did PhD in uh, uh, Ulysses Research Center, uh, and uh, I went there uh, in 2008. And uh, at that time, there was no uh, it was not easy to get 
funding uh, from uh, Georgia. Uh, and uh, I was uh, fully uh, financially supported by the German uh, side. So, and uh, after PhD, I stayed there uh, for uh, a few more years as a postdoc. And then I was offered the great uh, possibility to lead uh, a newly established uh, lab uh, at Tbilisi State University. So uh, this was the smart idea, uh, smart lab. Uh, so the idea of smart labs is to establish uh, small but uh, well-equipped and uh, uh, maintained uh, laboratories in uh, different fields. So the smart, uh, Word SMART itself uh, is the abbreviation for uh, science, medicine, applied research, and technologies. So uh, the main idea to have a small, uh, many labs in these different fields. And the first such lab was a SMART EDM lab, which was uh, involved, which is currently also involved in the uh, international experiment. Uh, which is led by uh, Jewish scientist, scientists. And uh, the core of this international uh, collaboration uh, is also in Jewish. And uh, the main aim of this experiment is to uh, search for uh, electric dipole moments of uh, charged particles. So it's uh, a completely uh, fundamental research direction. And uh, uh, our uh, smart uh, EDM lab is uh, contributing uh, actively to uh, develop one of the key uh, elements for this experiment, which is called polarimeter, because this is the detector which should uh, finally measure the uh, output of the experiment, so the final result, <clears throat> to obtain the final result. Uh, so. Uh, this lab is, uh, uh, as I mentioned, is located in uh, in Tbilisi, so in Tbilisi State University, and uh, it uh, opens uh, uh, wide opportunities for Georgian students to be involved in uh, international projects uh, uh, directly from Georgia, uh, not uh, going anywhere. So and. Uh, uh, we are uh, always uh, looking uh, for new uh, and good students uh, to encourage them and to involve in, in projects. And uh, up to now, uh, we have up to 15, we had up to, up to 15 students uh, at different uh, uh, stages, uh, mainly master students, but also uh, bachelors and uh, some few PhDs. Uh, have been in, involved uh, in our uh, activities so far. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, this uh, this research uh, so is uh, collaborative research uh, within uh, Georgia and Germany. So and uh, it is not uh, only uh, it is it is not closed research. So we also uh, go in English from time to time to participate in the experiments uh, to uh, test our, uh, test our uh, developments in the actual conditions and so on. And the students, which I mentioned, are involved in all these uh, stages, starting from uh, Georgia, uh, starting from uh, sketches, uh, 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 continuing to development something valuable and then test it. Uh, so, and uh, during these uh, different phases, uh, I mentioned, uh, I noticed that uh, students uh, uh, need more information, uh, which, uh, uh, which they want to, uh, to understand in which direction they want to go uh, finally. Because uh, one thing is to, uh, they, when they are in Georgia and uh, they have some, finite possibilities, let's say, yeah, in research. But another thing is when they go uh, abroad uh, in such a large center uh, uh, as the Jewish Research Center is, and then uh, very wide opportunities uh, open in front of them. And uh, uh, we had few students uh, 
uh, who uh, decided to go in different direction after they saw these wide possibilities. And uh, I think that uh, this um, uh, share of the knowledge and the experience uh, is very useful. And this uh, new portal uh, will be very useful uh, for the new students and uh, beginners, uh, beginner researchers. And uh, uh, besides, I think that uh, this portal will be also very useful uh, for established researchers as well, who are willing to uh, broaden the research or increase the research capability and the research output of their um, investigations. Because uh, as I mentioned, uh, in all uh, phases, we, we are uh, and we still are looking for new good students to involve them in our uh, projects. And uh, for us also, this uh, new uh, portal will be also useful. And uh, at the end, uh, I would like to again congratulate with this, uh, with the opening and with the launching of this new portal. So thank you very much. And uh, if you have some questions, I will be happy to answer. Thank you, thank you guys very much. And um, yeah, feel free to write your questions in the chat box. And with your permission, also, I'd like to thank you for bringing this really important point uh, about engaging young research, young early careers researchers, right, or students in this process of exploration of mobility schemes and mobility opportunities, because this is indeed uh, one of the best ways of triggering their interest, right, and of kind of um, attracting them into this whole area of interdisciplinary cross-sectoral research that uh, are possible um, across uh, countries and uh, yeah, you don't really have to belong to some geographical uh, area in order to be the part of a really international research. And this leads us, uh, thank you once again, David, uh, this leads us to our next speaker, uh, Ms. Narin Yegian, um, uh, um, uh, Associate Professor from University of California, and uh, she will probably share her perspective on how mobility contributed to shape the research career. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I am truly humbled and um, honored to be invited to an event um, such as this, especially considering that um, most of the efforts here are, are really related to research um, in Europe, um, where I um, uh, represent uh, Northern America in some ways, but um, I, I think it's important to mention that um, interdisciplinary and international um, collaborations in many ways are these days cannot be tied to a single country. Um, or single location. We are all um, and events um, and the nature of the event right now um, and the fact that we are all a meeting over um, technology, um, means of technology because of the situation that is happening globally that we all have to deal with is a big reminder um, that we live in the world where we cannot solve problems um, individually within a single country or a region for that matter. And um, whether we want it or not, um, if we want to be in science, if we want our science to make any difference, we have to think globally. We have to um, think about it um, interdisciplinary and we have to raise um, and pose questions in a way that is these days globally relevant, that is these days um, globally meaningful, especially um, as we are thinking about um, advancing research and as we're thinking about raising younger generations of students, younger generations of academics and future researchers. So that's in many, many ways um, where um, my experience and my thinking about my own research have become, started to um, change and, um, and shape um, in, in future ways, in many ways. And uh, as um, I represent um, University of California, Davis, in um, here in Georgia, and I, I'm here only because, well, not only, but partially <laughs> because of the support of the um, Global um, Affairs Grant um, that I was able to receive to um, address some of the questions that I pose in my own research, which is related to 
mediated information processing, um, issues of misinformation, issues of health communication um, in many ways, um, in a way that um, brings global questions to it, in a way that uh, addresses questions um, related to how um, ethnicity, context, uh, location makes a difference in distribution of this information. And um, part of that grant is advancement and study of um, and addressing of these questions in a way that is global, in a way that is international, in a way that is meaningful and unique to Georgia in this case, but um, also in a way that is um, um, bringing in um, and um, mentors um, a lot of um, students, interested students, due to cooperation uh, with the uh, Center for um, Social Research, which was represented by Lika, uh, uh, chaired and directors, led by Lika <laughs> Zuladze, who was presenting um, some of the statistics and programs that they have um, uh, in, in Tbilisi, in, in Georgia, uh, in collaborations with other universities, um, and she was presenting in the previous panel for those of, of you who are just joining. Um, I think um, I'm hoping here, um, in being well in Georgia, to establish some collaborations and some opportunities for students, graduate students here, to um, learn a little bit more about the skills and techniques and methodologies that we have in my lab in, in the University of California, open up opportunities for them to participate in exchange programs through our Institute for Global Affairs, which is very open these days to interactions, um, establish some connections um, and exchange programs um, that would make it possible for them to take courses. Um, one of the uh, trials that I will be doing here, uh, mini trials through teaching and lecturing at the Tbilisi State University, um, and it's an honor, um, I'm honored actually to be able to do that with Georgian students, um, is to um, build uh, collaborations and build modules uh, um, based online modules for now um, for, um, in, for Georgian students to participate in taking courses at University of California. So um, hopefully we can make that happen and we will be starting to work on that as I will be teaching with um, hopefully with the support of the faculty at the Tbilisi State University and obviously Institute for Global Affairs that I represent and whose funds will be used for this um, research goals um, um, are open for these opportunities. So um, I'd like to, I wanted to let you know about that. I think it is very important um, personally for me also to be in Georgia. Um, Georgia has always been, um, I grew up here, I was born here um, and, and left when I was very young and I never thought I would be back, but I am. Um, and, um, and it's fantastic to remember um, and be reminded of how, how, how welcoming and how fertile and how international and how cosmopolitan in many, many ways um, Tbilisi is and Georgia is. And, um, part of um, my ability to be open to the world and other ideas really, really comes from the spirit and the and the nature of education. And so, um, I'm very, very thrilled. I I am very excited uh, to be here. I'm excited to address questions in a way that might be useful and meaningful both for researchers and students here. And, um, and I'm looking forward to, uh, to produce um, meaningful outcomes um, with the work that I will be doing here. In many ways, it's very transformative. It allows me to ask questions and bringing questions and new variables. It challenges me to readdress my own questions and not be too myopic by talking to other people, by talking to other researchers here. And it also opens up a lot of opportunities for students. I'm looking forward to be able to pass on my knowledge and my skills to students here in Georgia. And hopefully we can establish some ways to collaborate and make it more consistent and stable with students um, in, the, um, in the United States at my home university. Um, I do not want to um, hold up too much of the time um, and allow other people uh, speak as well, but I would, Post in the chat, um, obviously, um, some information about the global affairs office that I represent, and I will leave my email. Thank you very much again for having me.
um, here and for um, and congratulations again on this um, really fantastic opportunity and an event. Thank you. Thank you, Naris. Thank you so much for sharing this really inspiring story of you coming back uh, to uh, uh, Georgia, and this is a beauty of development and migration, right? When you are circulating around the, uh, the, the states or places, universities representing the Institute of Global Studies, at the same time working for the University of California, and then uh, willing to transfer your knowledge and share your talent with the university students at Tbilisi State University, right? So. That is a really inspiring story. And also, thank you for bringing uh, and highlighting this point of uh, our yeah, uh, current global pandemic that is really pushing us to uh, use uh, all these technologies and all the modern uh, solutions that are at stake, at least now, um, uh, so that we address them and use them properly. And EuroAccess Georgia is definitely one of those tools that will hopefully inspire young researchers and students and uh, well-established researchers and those willing to share their talents around them across the globe. So yeah, and thank you for also um, your openness to share uh, all these details and information about how to address you in case uh, attendants and participants have questions with regards to uh, global uh, international global center uh, and the University of California. Uh, all right, now let's move give a word to our next speaker, uh, an associate professor from Ilia State University, Mr. Vincenzo Lacani. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? I can. I think I can. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. So, uh, thanks a lot for having me here. And uh, again, congratulations for uh, the opening of the practice uh, portal in Georgia. So yes, uh, name is Vincenzo Lagani, and uh, I'm a student professor of bioinformatics here in the University in Tbilisi. I'm also the recipient of a Marie uh, Slovodowska Curie uh, Fellowship. It actually it just ended a couple of months ago, and I'm just saying this because actually it's really vital for what I'm going to discuss right now. And uh, I'm here to bring my uh, little experience, a little, uh, let's say, use case about how mobility actually can affect the uh, career development of a researcher. Uh, I'm Italian. I actually made all my studies in Italy, in Calabria, until my PhD in operational research, a branch of mathematics. And uh, back then, when I was still young, 28 years old, and then I decided that, uh, okay, it's time really to travel a bit and gain knowledge. So talking about mobility. And then I decided to go actually in Crete, in Greece, where uh, I applied my knowledge about mathematical modeling to biology. And so from mathematics, let's say, I transitioned uh, to bioinformatics and I kept yeah. working in this field for uh, 10 years. Then uh, I, and during these 10 years, actually, again, talking about mobility, I was, uh, in, I, I was lucky enough to be involved in pretty much a number of projects. And this brought me to collaborate with a number of uh, uh, different labs uh, in different countries uh, around Europe. Uh, also outside of Europe, uh, uh, in Sweden, uh, in Norway, Belgium, uh, Spain. And finally, uh, a few years ago, I decided actually to go for a Marie Curie, uh, Slodos Marie Slodowska Curie uh, Fellowship. And this brought me here in Georgia, where uh, together with Professor Solmonia, again from Ilias University, we decided to write a project about uh, memory formation in vertebrates. And this is actually what I've been done, uh, uh, doing for the last few years. So for, uh, for whoever does not, is not uh, uh, familiar with uh, this type of grants, Maria, Marie Curie, Maestro Rosco Curie grants, these grants actually, they are totally based on mobility. They only actually grant you some funds if you are willing to go to a different country, to a different lab in order to learn new techniques, in order to grow professionally uh, through contamination, let's say, to being contaminated with and all somebody else. So this is actually my career. And my point here, what I came to say is that everything I've done, all that I've done since I finished my PhD until now was actually uh, possible mainly because I had the opportunity to collaborate with so many brilliant people. And uh, all uh, possible type of projects I've uh, 
have been granted and all, all type of uh, scientific works that I have authored. It was actually mainly, uh, it was okay. I, I put some, uh, some part of myself, but it was mainly because uh, there was opportunity to collaborate. And uh, this is for me a really key point because uh, at least for what I've seen until now in my experience again, uh, the, where we are now in terms of research, uh, everything can be done only through a large collaboration, meaning that if you really want to make some type of research that can be impactful, especially in some disciplines that are uh, by itself cross-sectional, like bioinformatics, biology, plus computer science, then uh, you can only achieve some great results by collaborating with the, uh, very brilliant minds, with, uh, with the people that can actually complement your knowledge, complement your skills and bring uh, you forth. So this is uh, my, uh, this is my contribution here. I would be happy to get uh, any possible question later on. So yeah, I will be done. Thank you. Thank you very much. And you as well, welcome uh, to this new context of uh, uh, Ilias State University and Georgian research as students. And thank you also for mentioning Maria Spados theories actions. Uh, that is, of course, as you have highlighted, and I think the other speakers as well have uh, shared their stories, how they have benefited from this particular scheme that used to be the part of Horizon 2020. And uh, here on your access, uh, when you start to, so if you go to the portal and you start to uh, seek for jobs and fundings, and of course, indicate your um, research level, like you're an early career researcher or mid uh, and fields, you find lots of opportunities that are as part of the Maria Skladowska reactions, either uh, PhD programs or university um, collaborations. So um, MSCA, as we call it also briefly, Maria those that your actions are really, really very active. And I, uh, together with you, I will just allow myself to encourage um, participants to share information and also to, to um, uh, engage um, uh, themselves as well. And we, as far as I remember, we also have a national contact point of Maria Skolovska Curie Actions in Georgia as well. Uh, great. Uh, thank you once again. And uh, best of luck in your endeavors in um, Georgia and at, least at, at the Ilya State University. Let me also add, let me also add and sorry. This that, brings uh, us to our next. Speaker. Let me also add, add that uh, George is also. Ah, George is also. Uh, mm -hmm. George essentially can also benefit of wedding fellowship. Like my, my uh, MSCA uh, fellowship was actually a wedding fellowship, meaning that you have additional mm -hmm. opportunity with respect to other countries because Georgia has this status. Yes, and since you uh, you have shared your story from um, uh, from in, in your personal story, how you have uh, uh, engaged in um, uh, research in Georgia, this reminds me of one of the great schemes that uh, National Science Foundation is running we was, together with GNR. Uh, the Italian National Science Foundation, and that is a beautiful collaboration that is supporting mobility, by the way, joint research and mobility scheme as well. And that is a collaboration that has been expanded because, um, because of how these two countries' researchers uh, collaborate. So yes, uh, th 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 there, there are wide opportunities indeed, and your access to Georgia uh, and will definitely you know, be one of the actors spreading uh, a word on that. Let's give now a word to our next speaker, uh, Ms. Um, Atinati Mamatashuri, a full professor at Ilya State University as well. Uh, Ms. Atinati, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I will share my screen. Uh, I have some PowerPoint slides to show. Uh, do you see my screen? Yes, yes, I think everything is fine. Okay, thank you. Um, and so I will, um, first of all, briefly uh, introduce myself uh, and I will say some, uh, a few words about my uh, current research project and then talk uh, briefly uh, based on my own experience about how crucial it is for, uh, for the uh, researcher to get European funding and by means of the mobility programs, perform the research abroad in different uh, universities or, or uh, host 
centers. So I'm a professor of uh, comparative literature at Tbilisi State University in, uh, in Tbilisi, and currently I'm uh, in uh, Luxembourg for my research. Uh, my uh, scientific stay in uh, Luxembourg is uh, linked uh, to, on the one hand, to the intermobility program of the National Research Fund of Luxembourg. Uh, it uh, was a, a one-year project uh, running from September uh, 2020 to August 2021. And uh, on the one hand, uh, it is linked to the scientific support of the Fondation Luxembourgeoise pour la mémoire de l'échoir and co-financed by OEUVRE. Uh, so uh, this is the project that will last uh, six months uh, uh, from September now to February 2022. So it is a um, six month project and within this uh, project, I'm preparing a monograph. Uh, so my uh, research focus is uh, Francophone literature, Luxembourgish, Belgian, French literature, and in, per in particular, I'm working on the denunciation of anti-Semitism by uh, French-speaking uh, writers um, during the Second World uh, War. So uh, it is not my um, only uh, scientific stay. Uh, I had also brought, I had also uh, Marie Curie uh, fellowship in uh, twenty uh, in two thousand fifteen two thousand seventeen. So um, during two years uh, that allowed me to be a visiting scholar in at the Sorbonne University. Uh, so the possibility for uh, researchers to obtain funding for the research project is crucial on many levels, but it will, uh, I will in particular emphasize on researchers coming from uh, uh, countries such, uh, uh, such as Georgia is, because uh, the country that was occupied by Soviet Russia uh, for more than 70 years uh, and remained closed uh, on itself and to the rest of the world behind the Iron Curtain. So in this context, I think that the mobility of researchers means precisely, um, it's very important for Georgian scholars, uh, especially because it means uh, the mobility program, it means uh, precisely this openness, openness of mind, openness in the sense of uh, borderless research that allows an exchange that is not unilateral exchange uh, that only the researcher sees uh, because it's a bilateral process where the one who arrives, so the researcher who arrives at the host unit also makes a contribution where he goes. So in this sense, uh, the, um, this uh, uh, mobility uh, programs, they allow the visibility not only uh, of the personal research, but also of the university, of the uh, university from which the researcher is that they represent. It is therefore important that the university can also give this opportunity to the researcher to go abroad to perform the research for two years, three years, or etc. But it is uh, also important that the university understand this uh, uh, this uh, um, uh, this importance of the mobility programs, and uh, in a concrete sense for the researcher. Mobility allows to access to libraries, archives, to conduct research, especially in the human sciences, to build in and expand a network of international researchers to develop joint projects. And it was uh, already emphasized uh, here um, by, uh, by my colleagues, researchers who, um, who also talk about this um, importance of the collaborative process. Uh, collaborative projects. And uh, it uh, permits to organize jo joint colloquiums, joint study days based on common research interests. And often these are crucial collaborations that allow coexistence of different points of views and advance the field of the research. Sometimes without these collaborations, this would never be uh, possible. 
So, uh, for example, based on my uh, individual example, I can say that, for example, this intermobility uh, program in Luxembourg has enabled a collaboration between researchers from uh, different institutions via two international study days that we organized here in Luxembourg. Uh, so uh, myself and my colleague from the University of Luxembourg, Blondine Londo. So this conference project therefore brought together uh, three institutions. It brought together the University of Luxembourg, Ely State University, and National Center of uh, Literature, the actual my actual host uh, uh, host institution. So. Um, Plus, I can say that uh, the study days thus made it possible to take different look at the subject of the issue that was um, uh, that was uh, the spoliations and persecutions uh, during the Second World War. So uh, it brings together different perspectives and uh, different uh, and uh, allowed an in, uh, interdisciplinary exchange also with. Uh, myself, uh, the organizer, uh, the, um, which I represent the uh, literary domain, and my co-organizer, she, she was a historian. So it all goes to the exchange uh, on the subject um, of different points of views to bring together historians, uh, literary uh, professional, literary researchers, etc., etc. So another example that I can uh, take, it is a study day that I organized with my colleagues from Brussels, Brussels University last year. Uh, it was a six month uh, mobility program and it uh, already resulted in a book. Uh, so currently my project, um, and I also, uh, already said that my current project involves uh, the uh, writing of the monograph on which I'm now working. So all of this is to say to what extent mobility programs allow us to advance uh, the research, um, create a network of researchers, organize scientific events uh, that have a direct impact on the researcher career, the researcher acquires a visibility that uh, she or he didn't have before, and uh, his or her work is disseminated to a wider public. So once again, I would like to emphasize the transfer of knowledge from the host unit to the researcher and from the researcher to the host unit, because this process is bilateral and the mobility programs are uh, important uh, for both sides. So it is obvious that giving the possibility of mobility to researchers uh, from uh, countries uh, such uh, like Georgia is, is even more important on, uh, at all levels. So I'm very happy to uh, this um, our access, uh, this our access program is now established in Georgia. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Atinati. You know, you have so clearly uh, shown us those key indicators that helped you to achieve success throughout your career uh, and uh, all these mobility opportunities that have enabled you to advance in your research uh, and professional career. It's, thank you so much for giving really, really tangible, I don't know, very visible and uh, measurable uh, indicators of how mobility actually uh, supported you and uh, the, co the connections. And it's so great to see uh, um, names and surnames being in Georgia, some of them being somewhere else, uh, representing different countries and universities. And uh, yeah, now we are all experiencing and witnessing um, the great outcomes of uh, mobility, even in these uh, crazy and really uncertain times. And now let's give a word to our next speaker. Thank you once again, Ms. Atinati, Professor Atinati. Uh, let's uh, give a word to our next speaker, Ms. Khatna Kahiani, um, uh, a, a researcher from, um, I think, 
in, in our earlier information sessions, we had um, different affiliation, Ms. Khatuna Kahian, as far as I know. So I believe you have uh, experienced another mobility or another internationalization uh, since those times that we have met last uh, and uh, have discussed your career advancement. <laughs> so yes, please, the floor is yours. And um, thank you once again. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, I'm glad to be here. Thank you for inviting me and um, giving me opportunity to share with you some of my experience. Um, I'm an um, academic and research employee at the um, um, HILRS, High Performance Computing Center at University of Stuttgart in Germany. Now, uh, and the path to this uh, current position is uh, pretty long and uh, uh, my first mobility, my uh, first research mobility uh, started with the um, um, one year fellowship of uh, German Academic Exchange Service, um, DAD. Uh, that was back in, in 1998. Uh, I spent one year um, uh, researching at um, the University of Karlsruhe, and now the Institute of Karlsruhe Institute of Technology. And that was a really great experience because the, uh, this was my first um, um, travel abroad um, in Western uh, world. I would say, and the Germany was the first country after the uh, fall of Soviet Union. So it was a really um, different experience. And um, after one year fellowship, I continued uh, with a doctoral study at the same university. Um, I uh, um, had with me my family, two kids. I just moved, uh, was moving around with <laughs> to a very young school, uh, uh, um, five and six year old kids. They were practically developing <laughs> themselves with myself, studying the Germany and so on, because uh, they only knew um, uh, 300 words in German. And after that, uh, that was the first uh, uh, kind of mobility uh, I experienced, and that was a great um, experience. It shaped really my career because then I performed the doctoral study in Germany. I wrote my PhD thesis in German. I uh, had very little uh, knowledge of English uh, and uh, I just learned the English by reading the papers, <laughs> in, uh, English papers. Um, um, after PhD study, I uh, found myself uh, uh, eager to experience also some research environment abroad, like the Germans did. So I ended up in the United States in two different institutions, and uh, we spent totally um, 11 years of uh, um, time abroad. Then I came back to Georgia. That was um, right of, uh, after um, uh, um, 2008 uh, war. Uh, um, uh, events and uh, I spent time um, like six years um, working at the Tbilisi State University. That was practically a break in my research career. Uh, and uh, um, here, uh, the European Union opened a new call that was the Marie Curie Actions uh, under the Career Restart Panel. They just opened this call, and this was a 2014 first call. And uh, uh, I recall uh, we had the information meetings from Lika Glonti, actually. She uh, had the, some uh, experts uh, from European Union brought to us at the university, um, looking for the experts um, uh, for um, evaluation panel for the um, research executive agencies. Um, I applied for this position because I had some background in uh, research. And uh, that was great uh, experience also um, in to evaluation, um, research uh, problem, word of the, the proposal evaluation. evaluation. I applied for the uh, um, Marie Curie um, fellowship and uh, ended up in uh, uh, with the mobility in Italy, uh, one of the institution of the uh, excellent center of uh, uh, Italian National uh, Research Council that is in Pisa. Mm. Nano says that uh, uh, although I am chemist, I conducted the research there uh, in uh, material science uh, 
um, and uh, then I came back to Georgia, but it uh, ended up uh, uh, the way that um, I had to reconsider uh, what I wanted to, uh, in life and how way I wanted to continue my career. Um, and uh, then uh, I applied for uh, um, uh, high performance computing center of uh, Stuttgart, HLRS, which is one of the um, one of the three member centers of the Gauss uh, Center for Supercomputing. Um, this is the um, uh, this uh, three centers or Gauss Supercomputing Center. They are providing um, HPC resources, high performance uh, computing resources uh, to the uh, national and the European um, researchers. Um, for the tasks uh, that cannot be accomplished on the personal computer. So um, I would say um, the answer on your question and the panel question is clear that the um, researchers mobility is uh, contributing to the development of uh, research careers and uh, not uh, only to research careers, but uh, and development of the personality as well, because uh, um, any kind of mobility uh, um, gives you the uh, not only technical skills um, in research, but also the soft skills. For example, like. Uh, um, what it's like to live in another cult, uh, country, uh, learn other languages, um, uh, to get familiar with the mentality of country, uh, work uh, culture or um, habit of um, working, which is also, I would say, very different from the Western uh, society to the Eastern um, or um, post-Soviet um, area. And I'm very glad that uh, in today's meetings, I was following all your presentations and uh, I'm very happy to hear um, great uh, news from Georgia uh, in uh, the area uh, which are experienced, uh, experiencing today's. I, heard, I, I was listening to the great speakers. Um, uh, uh, you have uh, also already visiting uh, scientists in Georgia and great example of uh, mobility into the, to the Georgia because one side mobility is always uh, the brain drain and you of course uh, Georgia of course needs <laughs> of course needs incoming uh, researchers and the Erxus platform national platform which uh, uh, you are uh, presented uh, today and we are all part of this uh, uh, event is uh, a really great tool uh, uh, to get informed uh, to get first help because I myself I, um, I recall myself um, uh, during the mobility to Italy uh, um, I was looking. Uh, I was uh, using uh, very heavily the Erxus uh, resources because it has different informations. Um, for example, um, immigrations um, uh, documents, uh, um, just um, uh, daily tools, which is uh, absolutely necessary for researchers uh, when they are moving into the, another countries, and especially into countries uh, they, uh, when they do not speak the uh, language for. And uh, not only this way, but also the Erxus um, portal has also the tools uh, to search for the jobs uh, and uh, uh, lots of um, positions are there. It will be definitely great help uh, for young as well um, experienced researchers. And uh, um, uh, European Union has a great landscape, uh, research uh, landscape, and uh, um, there are several calls uh, and um, programs that are not supporting not only young researchers, but also the researchers uh, without uh, age limit. So this is the really nice opportunity to use it. Um, uh, not only for Georgian researchers, but also the uh, researchers uh, that live in abroad and want to experience um, Georgian research culture and uh, the country itself. So my sincere congratulations to you and I wish you great success, all of you. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much. That was so inspiring. And also I would, <laughs> I would add one more adjective to the way you described your family members. I think your kids were really loyal <laughs> towards your whole experience and very open yeah. to what you were experiencing. <laughs> yeah, and this is, uh, of course, contributing to open mind thing, uh, and, um, mm, yeah. That's really beautiful to experience uh, such a 
uh, such a stages in your life when you are supported by uh, that's true. professionals. That's uh, mm -hmm. And it's really, yeah. I mean, that's the meaning of our life, right? Not to only sure. to be kind of uh, successful <laughs> in one. Uh, one and I would um, add one comment that um, no, the reason why you have to be more mobile is just because of science itself, the international. Mm -hmm. And uh, without uh, great collaboration, we are, without great contribution, uh, we would not be here where we are right now. Absolutely. Okay. And in, at every stage, probably, I mean, that's uh, also to respond to your experience, at every stage of our development, we really need some kind of tailor-made, you know, those schemes that adapt to our realities and uh, whatever you have mentioned and other speakers as well you have uh, uh, shared those schemes mobility schemes or partnership schemes uh, uh, exchange programs that were relevant to you at that particular stage of your career and uh, uh, many times when you know international experts come to Georgia they do different reviews they, they usually indicate uh, that's a you know general statement but they usually indicate that there are resources scattered around there are opportunities scattered around and uh, coordinating and kind of connecting and gathering this information at one place is a really uh, a great uh, and valuable thing I would uh, personally think and it would be great and it is great that your access can combine all those um, different types of schemes that can support researchers when they break when they have a, a, a little or several years of break in their career like in your case Ms., uh, the doctor uh, Dr. Kahiani, and then you have relaunched the scheme and uh, it's great that we can name people like Rilka, for instance, and different offices, universities, ac uh, actions uh, that have been supportive in Georgia. So now your access Georgia has to kind of unite all these yeah. uh, efforts, right? And also one more long time, uh, maybe it is slow process, but uh, important yeah. it, it should uh, go forward. Yeah, keep going. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And that information that you have highlighted about integration, when you are mobile, when you're moving from place to place, you really indeed are in need of uh, information how to integrate, right? What are the, you know, living conditions and of stuff, course, yeah. how to live and how to move. Yeah. And uh, here as well on the Euro Access Portal, you have information and assistance, working, living, research in Georgia and different kind of um, supportive um, data probably uh, that, uh, that you need when you, you know, make a decision and leave and you have lots of practicalities yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> accommodation or like passports or stuff, oh, well, I mean, migration things. Yeah, been, yeah, for example, migration things. Um, thank you very much uh, to all um, uh, uh, panelists uh, for sharing inspiring stories. And I, um, I hope that we have inspired other participants as well. And we uh, all believe in the power of uh, uh, knowledge sharing and power of collaboration, internationalization. And uh, we all, you know, once again, we all wish our colleagues at the National Science Foundation and Your Access Georgia uh, every success and uh, great, great luck and I don't know, all the best to you guys to implement and achieve all, all the great things that you uh, have ahead of you. With this, I close the Thank session you. and give word to Miranda.